Ooh, the wind is so loud now without my ear ports in. Okay, so back to the crisis of, of faith, let's just put it that way, all right. So, as you know, I'm playing saxophone a lot more and riding a lot less, I've been riding a lot less, uh, and moto vlogging even less than that, just haven't been feeling it. Uh, I've actually got videos that I've never processed from the, uh, the um, trip to Arizona. So, I don't know why that is, maybe I just got bored, I don't know, life things, I know that I'm working a hell of a lot more than I used to. Every year they pile more and more on me. So I'm in there from basically 8 a.m. to at least 4 p.m., more likely 6 p.m. There's always something to do at the job. Always, always, always. So, at least I'm doing it, you know. I feel happy that I'm getting things done. I'm sure I won't get any recognition for it. And I'll probably instead just get crit criticism for the, like, the one or two things that I may have overlooked. I'm sure that's coming. Oh, well, you didn't do this. Or you did it, but you didn't do this right. You didn't tell me how you wanted it. That's the kind of loveliness I deal with. So maybe that's why I'm not riding as much. I'm tireder now, is that a word? I'm more tired than I used to be. And more achy, just pain everywhere. I don't want to go through the rigmarole of getting on my good boots, getting on my good jacket, getting the, the cameras ready and all that jazz. Just like, eh, you know, it's so much easier to just hop in a truck, especially with, you know, when I have the saxophone and I want to play that in the afternoon. I haven't even been doing that enough lately. Hello, goats. Look at this, huh? Look at this happy horse ship. Oh my goodness. More houses. <sighs> more people, more houses, more traffic, more people up my foot. So the Walgreens I went to just now, that's as north as I'll go. Unless I'm going through the town of Raleigh and all that to get elsewhere, but I don't go riding around up there. Those aren't fun roads to ride. It's all cars and people and jumbles and red lights and people up your butt. Nope. I head to the south. And this, this here is a vanishing thing. I'm sure it won't be very long, but this will all be houses too. All it takes is grandma or grandpa to die and then the, the kids or the grandkids to get a, you know, big time offer multi-million offer and then they say, okay, I'm going to sell it. Next thing you know, it's a subdivision. And you can't blame them. I mean, property taxes are such that if you're not working the land, then you're paying all these taxes for land that's not earning you any income. And a lot of these people nowadays, modern folks, they don't want to work on a farm. It's hard work. And it's not really incentivized anymore. You know, people used to take pride in that kind of thing. Now it's like, no, bust me what for what? Get the big paycheck and go on with your life. That's what they're doing now. As I continue to have this vehicle too close to me. Aggravating. Anyway.
So does this mean that I'm going to quit moto vlogging? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. I'll still make videos, but they may not be as often as you might like, and they may not be uh, as motorcycly. I mean, I'll be on the bike and I'll be talking about stuff, but if you want me to give you a review of the the mirrors on the Honda Goldwing or the the giant fat mug holder, you know, I bought from my Goldwing or the next new doodad I put on my bike, eh, it's going to be very few and far between. If I'll downsize from this bike to something smaller, that'll be when I'm old and frail <laughs> next week. Uh, I'm still pretty beefy, so I'm beefy enough to hold myself up. That means I'm beefy enough to hold this bike up. And I need a beefy bike just to get this, you know, butt moving fast enough. So I'll be on this bike for a while. I don't like noise, so I'm not going to get a loud, noisy exhaust or bike that has a loud exhaust I like quick responsiveness that's what this has so well, I'm sticking with it unless they come up with something more awesome it has a DCT I love the damn DCT this thing is amazing oh you're gonna U-turn you're gonna U-turn are you oh, I'm sorry. at least you waited for me I just got a text from uh, Road Reality, my buddy John up in Maryland. He's going through the loss of a beloved uh, dog, pet, uh, just, ugh, furry, furry family. That's awful, awful pain. I've been through it three times in the last two years. I'm all out of dogs, all out of pets, all I have is plants. It's very painful. I've, I've lost a lot of animals over the years because I've been a dog household since uh, 2001. Maltese's first and then I had Moscati's and uh, I had a rat terrier. I had my Chihuahua mix. It's very sad when they cross the Rainbow Bridge, but you've got to be there for them. You gave them a good life, you gotta give them a good send off too. You gotta be strong for them. And don't let them know you're sad. You just gotta feed them like like the best food they've ever had as you're getting close to the, the time to go to the vet or have the vet come to you. They have that now. Ice cream and cheeseburgers and whatever their favorite thing is. Uh, don't let them suffer. The moment you feel like, okay, they're starting to suffer and their quality of life is crap, that's when you take them in. And it hurts like hell. And you feel like you're going to die. The, the, the pain is so bad and you cry and, oh, it's just horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's one of the reasons I don't want to get a dog again. Had enough. All right. So what's the good news? There's a lot of people are probably asking, "Geez, Mike, I don't want to watch your videos if all you're going to do is grouse." Okay, here I got good news. You won't be interested in, it, but I got good news. Uh, first bit of good news is I'm way ahead of the things that usually plague me up until the end of the semester at my job. So faculty and staff evaluations, uh, turning in the schedule for the summer and the fall, making sure the workload formulas are in there correctly, 
doing my own uh, professional development requirement stuff. Ooh, look at this old truck. That's nice. That's very nice. Look at that old thing. Ooh, very nice. So that's really good news. I feel happy and proud to be ahead of things. And uh, saxophone-wise, I've been playing almost every day for months now. And I've now progressed over to wanting to record things and learn how to record things. Not that I'm good enough to, you know, record, but it's just another facet. So uh, I'll tell you the, the, the story of my fascination with this. It started back in the 90s. I think it was right around 94. I was at uh, Harvard Station, Harvard Square uh, T-Stop. T-Stop is the, uh, the affectionate term we get for the subway train, the, the subway uh, stop on the subway train, the red line in Boston. It's red because of the Harvard Crimson. And so there I am in Harvard Square, Harvard Square Station, all by myself on like a Tuesday afternoon. It's like 2 p.m. Nothing going on in there. There's this guy sitting there, kind of off in the in the recesses a little bit, a place that people don't normally sit unless it's rush, rush hour. And he's facing into, you know, just kind of facing the train tracks, sitting on, on the bench, right next to where the, the train goes into the tunnel proper and it gets all dark. So he's sitting right outside the darkness and he's playing a guitar and he's got a looper pedal and he's got a microphone and he's, he's banging on something and he gets the, the, the bass track, you know, the beat, he gets the drum track that he makes himself by hitting the guitar or, or tapping the microphone. I don't know how he did it. And then he had, you know, multiple guitar loops. He would play a couple of notes and then he'd push the loop and it would start playing. Then he'd play some more over that. And he had like three or four different loops going at the same time. And it was beautiful and it was solitary. And it echoed through the station and I was mesmerized. And I, I couldn't I couldn't take my eyes off it and couldn't take my ears off it. I just loved it so much. And uh, I just sat there and, and I think two or three trains went by and I didn't get on them because I was just so fascinated by the music that this guy was playing and how he was playing it all by himself. He constructed an entire little musical universe right there in that station. I loved it. So ever since then, I've always wanted to do something like that. Well, the wind is blowing, but it ain't bothering me. <laughs> All right, I got my mail. I'm going in the house now. I'm going to go sit down, maybe play some saxophone. And I'll talk to you later.